Hi, I'm Tim Berglund with Confluent. I've got a question for you. How long should you store data in Kafka? Now, cost drives a lot of us to set short retention periods. But when you adopt Kafka as your system of record, you're going to want to keep data around for longer. And I suppose in engineering, there are never really solutions. There are only trade-offs. But you'd still like this particular trade-off to be a bit more flexible. Well, good news. Confluent Cloud now has infinite storage. Infinite storage capacity, no storage limits. And when I say none, I do mean a certain amount. I mean, the cloud is built out of a finite number of actual computers. But the point is we will no longer place any limits on what you store in your Confluent Cloud topics. Let me tell you how it works. In a previous demo, I showed you how to scale from 1 to 50 CKUs. That's Confluence Cloud Computing Unit. And we scaled all the way up to 10, almost 11 gigabytes per second of throughput. Nigel Tufnell, call your office. Uh, I didn't let that run for long, though, because with a replication factor of 3, it would have taken just a single working day to rack up a petabyte in storage. That's a lot to put in an ordinary Kafka cluster, even in the cloud. Uh, but now I don't have to worry about scaling storage anymore. Let me show you. Let me create a topic here called Russell 3000 and give it infinite retention. So data will never go away from this topic. Now, Russell needs some data in it. Uh, we'll set up a data generator to fill it with simulated stock quotes. Note well, I don't have to think about provisioning storage or even growing the number of CKUs allocated to this cluster like I used to have to do. Realistically speaking, I cannot outdata this topic. The administrative work required to handle all this data would normally be daunting, but Confluent Cloud Infinite Storage takes care of it for me. And as usual, I pay only for the data I send to the cluster and store in a topic. That's because, I mean, brokers, replicas, storage, a fully managed Kafka service really should abstract all that away, which is exactly what Confluent Cloud does. And because of that, while I'm generating all that data and retaining it forever, I can go see to my chores. Now then, at this point, my cluster has one petabyte of data in it. That's three petabytes if we counted replicas. And I didn't exactly work hard to make it happen. But you know, with a topic this big, certain kinds of consumer access patterns can be a problem. If you've got multiple consumers reading a topic, which is a perfectly normal thing to do, you can run into inconsistent performance if some consumers are reading old data and others are reading from the newest data in the topic. Those lagging consumers can interfere with the caching of the hot set of data being read and written by the consumers that are caught up. Now, this is not a thing you have to worry about with Confluent Cloud. Let me show you by starting two consumer groups on our massive stock quote topic. The first consumer, which is just a perf test, is reading from the beginning of the log, and the other is reading only the latest events. We see that despite the consumers reading from different points in the log, Throughput is relatively consistent on both groups. You'd normally expect the lagging consumer to slow down the up-to-date one, but we just don't see that happening here. In fact, we see the lagging consumer is even faster, so it'll eventually be able to catch up. So, Confluent Cloud, no storage limits, all your data in one place, pay only for what you store, and do it in a performant way. Infinite storage limits are being rolled out to Confluent clusters now, so be on the lookout for notification when storage becomes infinite for you.